Well done on the numbers. What was the driver? You've now got one of the highest capital buffers in Europe. Bloomberg Intelligence would say you're cutting your way to greatness. What do you say to that? Look, we're focused on returns here at Avian AMRO. Um, uh, we have good performance and we want to continue that performance. So we're focused on delivering our targets, uh, our strong return on equity. We're now 13% for the year. That's at the top end of our range. Uh, and we're making progress on our cost income ratio. And as you mentioned, we're pleased with our developing capital ratio, which means we're well placed for Basel IV, the new rules, and also well placed in a position to consider additional distributions to shareholders. Those additional distributions to shareholders, that's really what's going to tantalise the market. Well done on numbers, by the way. 725 million euros, trouncing the estimates of 602 million euros. Dividends and buybacks. As the CFO, how do you look at it? We saw Warren Buffett doing buybacks. For you as the CFO, which road do you think that you're going to travel more aggressively, higher dividend or share buyback? Yeah, as I mentioned, our capital is a little bit above our range, so we can consider additional distributions beyond our 50% um, uh, dividend payout ratio, which is our base position. You know, we have a preference, mm. we think, for dividends. Uh, because it gives us more control, it's more predictable. So that's how we're thinking, at least in the short term. And the cost of income ratio also was very much a standout when I was breaking, breaking the numbers. I think we penciled in, the market had penciled in 57%. You, you really are beating on that. I suppose the question there is, how far through the restructuring programme are you? Is this as good as it gets in terms of the restructuring? Or what more is there left to do? Yeah. Well, look, we're, we're delivering on the program of, uh, of, of costs that we announced a couple of years ago. Uh, so uh, we announced 900 million of cost savings and a similar amount of investment around two years ago, targeting 56 to 58 percent in 2020. So uh, we're, we're, we're at 2018 and you can see we're at 55 percent for the year, uh, which we think is which is good. But we, you need to recognize that Q4 our costs are always a little bit higher as we have regulatory fees, and it's important for us that we sustainably reach our cost-income ratio in 2020. So we believe we're on track for that. Um, in terms of the Dutch market itself, the lending market, I just want to talk about the, the domestic market, as, as it were. How is that looking? How is it shaping up in terms of competition? Are you finding it harder? Are you using a little bit of mortgage market share? Just yeah. give me something under the hood in regards to that yeah. market. Yeah, I mean, the, the Dutch economy as a whole, as you know, is very strong. We're one of the strongest economies in the Eurozone right now at 3%. Uh, rates are low across Europe, and you've seen the housing market uh, be quite strong over the last year or two. I think in the mortgage market, as you indicated, uh, that market competition is, um, is getting tougher. Uh, our clients want very long mortgages these days, and our, our non-bank competitors, insurance and pension funds, are well placed to serve the long end. So we're, we're sticking to a disciplined approach in the mortgage market. You've seen our share come down a few points this year. We're content with that. Uh, we're looking to grow in other parts of our business. So you can see we're, we're growing this year in commercial banking, which is our SME clients here in the Netherlands, uh, uh, supporting them as they take advantage of the strong economy. So our approach, as, as we talked about earlier, is to deliver returns. We're looking for profitable growth. And we're trying to manage that in a moderate risk way because there's always a few dark clouds on the horizon that we need to worry about. Clifford, that's what I love about the CFO job. There's always that hint of prudence in the language. Um, yeah. Look, regulation is a critically important thing, and the Dutch, regulators, the Dutch regulators have said that ING is certainly not the only bank that did not fully comply with money laundering. Have you received, do you need to disclose anything in regards to warnings from the regulator, conversations with the regulator? Is there anything the market needs to know about your conversations with the regulator in regards to money yeah. laundering? Look, we have a, uh, an open and transparent uh, dialogue with the regulator. Uh, we recognize the importance of, um, of our role as a gatekeeper for the financial services industry. We put a lot of resources behind this because it's very important. There's a lot we're doing. There's always more we can do in this area, and we're very focused on it. 
So nothing, nothing specific to report, but we certainly acknowledge uh, our key role to play and it's an important priority for us.